Alright, today I'm going to fix my hyper flash on my turn signals. Now if you guys have a Jeep JK and you guys switch to LED turn signals and LED rear turn signals and stuff like that, you guys are going to run into the same problem sooner or later. Now what's weird about my situation, it's only on one side. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the problem right now. Alright, so I'm going to turn on each turn signal and you guys are quickly going to see the problem and the hyper flash happens on this side. So pretty much I cut out pretty much the whole video that I've recorded so far and uh, I was trying to put load resistors on the front turn signals of my Jeep JK because they were hyper flashing and I couldn't understand what the problem was. I was stumped so I cut out all the footage and uh, it was a complete waste of three hours. Anyway so if you guys have a hyper flash problem with your turn signals on a Jeep JK hopefully this video helps you out. If you're converting to LED turn signals, front or rear, you're going to need some load resistors. I'll leave a link in the description below to where I got mine. About $7, but usually if you buy turn signals that are LED, they come with them. Like if you buy a JW speaker, um, whatever ones, they come with them. And my cheap eBay ones even came with them. But they turned out to be garbage, as you guys will see in a minute. But the front turn signals, you do not need a load resistor for the front turn signals. It won't help you any. Because um, I tried putting them on, taking them off, nothing changed. So if you guys are going to try to put them on your front, don't waste your time. Don't do it. So I'm going to go ahead and let the rest of the video play for you guys. Hope you guys enjoy. So I was actually just about to give up. And then I realized I have LED taillights too that have load resistors built in. And I bought these taillights off of China, the China Special. And I was like, well maybe the quality of these taillights suck and the load resistor in the back went out. Let me show you what I saw. Pulled out the right rear and I don't know if you guys, if it will focus, but there's not a good connection on this side of the resistor. So this might be the actual problem. So what I'm going to do is get one of my new load resistors and tie it in right here and see what happens. So this is the kit that J ijdmtoy.com provides. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is about $7, so it's a pretty cheap fix. And they give you these little splicing connectors, but I hate these. And I'm going to just cut them and strip them and solder them the proper way instead of using these. I just, I just don't like these at all. I fixed it, boys. I have fixed it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have done it. I have done it. And all the problem was, was this garbage China load resistor. Everything is blinking properly. So now I actually just got to solder all this stuff up and clean it up. Easy fix. I'm actually really happy. Alright, I'll show you guys how I um, pretty much solder stuff, solder wires together. Instead of putting like a butt connector, I like to solder things. It's more permanent and it's more reliable and it's just better. So, pretty much put a heat streak on first and it's easy to forget about that. So, put that on first and then you want to kind of avatar tail connect your wires and then you want to just twist on each side and now I'll kind of lock each wire into place just like that and then I'm going to wait for my soldering iron to, to heat up and then I'll just solder these wires together and then slide the heat shrink over heat it up and you're done I think my soldering iron is pretty hot it's hot enough I just have some standard issue solder right here doesn't really matter what kind you use. I usually use a Harbor Freight kind, but I ran out the other day and my dad just had some laying around like this. So, let me deal. Okay. So, I just put the soldering iron on the bottom and just, you know. Alright, that wire should be pretty much done. Now, work on this wire over here. Also, you don't want to breathe in this soldering iron smoke. That'll probably give you AIDS or something. Alright, so that's all you gotta do for that. Kind of waited for everything to cool. Everything cools pretty fast. When you're talking about solder, or solder, whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce it. Now you just want to bring your heat shrink over your wire here. Now I cut an absurdly too long of a piece, but I mean, whatever. Don't really care. And then you just... You can of course use a heat gun, which is a little bit more effective than this. 
because the West Texas wind does not like lighters. Ow. But a little bit of patience. Alright, I'm just gonna get the heat gun, god damn it. Alright, that should do it. A little $15 Harbor Freight heat gun right here. So now it's time to just replace this bracket, take off this old resistor, and put on this new one, put everything back, and everything should work perfectly. So the reason why you want to mount this up to a metal surface is because this creates a lot of heat. You know why? Because this creates a short. You have a negative a ground coming on this side and a positive terminal coming on this side. And if you guys know anything about electronics, when you touch a negative to a positive, everything gets really damn hot. If you plug in um, jumper cables the wrong way to a car, so if you put your positive to their negative and their negative to your positive, your jumper cables will most likely melt. So that's why you need to melt this on a metal surface. If you melt it on plastic, it will melt. If you melt it on, if you put it on some carpet or something, it will burn. So just take that as precaution. Put this on a metal surface so you don't run into any issues. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned something. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.